Welcome to this episode of Trojan Poetry. This is episode 17. Yep, 17. And uh, this week I chose the poem. Mike has not read it. And we want to uh, send out two shout outs before we do this. We want to thank Gary Swafford for sending in the poem, the suggestion mm -hmm. this week. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Kyle Galato, who helps us every week with the sound and uh, the video, making sure that you can see and hear us. So we couldn't do it without him. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Galato. He's mm -hmm. right there behind yeah. the camera. <laughs> 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 All right. One of these days, we're going to get him in the show. We'll get him in the frame. <laughs> Maybe I'll write a poem about yeah, it. Yeah, let's write a poem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so I've chosen the poem. Mike hasn't seen it. Uh, this week the poem is called Pity by Stan Rice. Pity. In pitiless sun, the farmer is beating his donkey. Only its brown eyes drifting in pain from side to side move. Okay. Wow. Well, uh, last week we had a poem about anxiety, <laughs> mm. and this week we have a poem about pity. So, All right. go for it. So, I had not read any poems by Stan Rice before, and when I went online to look for them, um, this one immediately struck out because I like short poems. I'm going to be mm -hmm. honest, right? I like short po poems that then become like a puzzle, right? Because mm -hmm. there's so little text that you really then begin or have the luxury or the time to really start picking it apart and looking at it, right? And there's so little to play with that it's uh, easy to manipulate and try to think about. Uh, and the first thing that hit me was the uh, title, Pity, because the title is then immediately contradicted in the first line of the poem, yeah, which is that. in the in in pitiless sun, right? It's gone. Like there is no apparently there is no pity, or at least yeah. the natural world is not full of pity. So then uh, that made me think, well, where is the pity, right? So why why call a poem pity about this pitiless situation? Uh, not only is the sun have no pity, but the farmer has no pity. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so that was kind of a question I had. Uh, and then I realized or kind of looked more closely at the form, right? And basically it's two stanzas, well, it's three stanzas, mm -hmm. uh, three lines each, and then the last one is only one line or one word. And uh, not only that, but the first stanza is a sentence, mm -hmm. and then the second and third stanzas are a sentence uh, together. Yeah. I'm just right? noticing that now that you pointed it out. And when a, when a poet chooses to that form of imbalance, right, three, three, mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. uh, clearly there's some importance there. Because when I read the poem, I purposely didn't pause for that long, right? Because this mm -hmm. is a poem I think you have to see to understand, and I think mm -hmm. that's kind of a cool part of it. Mm -hmm. If you just heard it, you might not maybe get it. And what I came to was that the word move at the end is kind of a command for the reader, right? It's the poet saying, you're watching this horrible situation of this donkey getting beaten in this hot sun, you need to take pity on it, move, and stop, stop mm. the situation. So it's a call to action. Right, yeah. that's how I began to interpret it. Huh. And. Then, this morning, before uh, school, I was talking to a colleague, Mr. Graney, uh -huh. and he, he had a whole different take. And I was like, oh, wait a minute, you know, what you? and it took us, I don't know, we talked for a good 20 minutes about it, and his take, we kind of boiled down to, is that it's a pity that the donkey doesn't move. Uh. Right, because here's this donkey, he's getting beaten, and he doesn't move. And he's like, do something. Why doesn't he run away? Why doesn't he kick the farmer? Because right? the donkey could probably overtake the farmer mm -hmm. or outrun the farmer. Mm -hmm. So it's a pity that the donkey doesn't move and end its misery. So it doesn't know its own power almost. Or right. It doesn't know its own abilities. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so that totally blew my mind. Because I was like, oh, I've got it, right? It's yeah. all about, <laughs> we need to take pity. Yeah, speaking and then to he the came up with this whole other idea, and I was like, oh, that's brilliant. And that's why where it's a short poem. It only takes a few, like, you know, what, 30 seconds to read. Yeah. But then you can just have these great discussions about it. Um, and the other thing that hit me was the line breaks. And I talk mm -hmm. about line breaks a lot because that's really interesting to me, um, is that each line in those first two stanzas is just like this burden. Mm -hmm. Right, a pitiless son, right? That's a burden. The farmer is, right? He's just a fact. There's this farmer mm -hmm. and he beats things. He is mm -hmm. uh, beating his donkey. That's such a brutal line, <laughs> right. right? And then only its brown eyes drifting in pain 
from side to side, right? It just draws it out. If you pause after the lines, it just draws it out mm -hmm. and just makes it unbearable, mm -hmm. right? If you're open to that kind of reading. Yeah. Uh, so I don't, even, you know, even though it's only about seven lines, I was blown away by how much a poet can pack into a small space. With such simple language too. I mean, there's right. no there's no vocab in here. There's nothing that would throw right. you off or that you really have to pause and think about. Um, I really I, I like your interpretation of the last line, the call to action. Mm -hmm. I like Mr. Graney's interpretation of right. telling the donkey to move. I read this as the whole scene. It's it's a snapshot. It's like a photo mm -hmm. until you get to that last line where it says move. So right. it seems to me all of this is or a painting. You know, it's like all frozen and you're standing here looking at it and then all of a sudden at the end you get this quick little movement of eyes and you realize this is alive, this is really happening, right. you know? And so I almost read this as pity embodied, you know, like if you if you want to feel pity, feel it for this poor animal that, in this little painting, this vignette that, that the poet has created. So yeah, I, I don't know, I, I'd have to think about this some more, what that last line is really asking us to do. So. Right. A lot to think about in so few lines, you know? Yeah, and it's funny because you, you said it was like a painting because I, at one point over the last couple of weeks while I've been thinking about it, I began to think that it's a rumination or a reflection on art and that mm -hmm. it is a representation of abuse and it's not really happening and there's a pity we can't get into the poem to stop it. Like forever mm -hmm. and ever this is in happening. this poem, yeah. the present tense beating his donkey, it's yeah. going to go on and we as readers cannot stop that. Yeah. So that's even How enough, powerful is that? <laughs> right? Um, the static nature of art and yet it's moving. Mm -hmm. Just for that little second of the eyes. Right, right. Nothing else. It's, yeah. Yeah, so very cool. So thank you for the recommendation. Uh, our mm -hmm. question for the week, or my question for the week is, uh, do you think it's important, and I know there's no answer to this, but what do you think? Uh, do you think the author had one intention, or did the author attempt to create a poem that would endlessly create possibilities mm -hmm. right and the students ask that a lot like well how do we know what the meaning is and you know that's a good question like is there a meaning that the author intended or did the author intend ambiguity so that we could in interact with the poem probably but mm -hmm. right. um, <laughs> <laughs> as all good art yeah. usually has you know right so that's it yeah well, thanks for watching. Please join the conversation in the comments on YouTube or on Twitter at Trojan Poetry DGN. Also, check out our website at trojanpoetrydgn.blogspot.com.